Hello and welcome back to Chino Does Stuff. On today's video, I'm going to be continuing my series on Microsoft Power Apps, and I'm going to be going back and covering the subject that I did last year, which was rules and form field validation. Rules were a funny sort of thing, and I can kind of understand why they removed them and, they and why they weren't that popular in Power Apps. Effectively, what they did was just generate logic inside of your Power App application on a control or on a field that you wanted to um, implement something some kind of validation or some kind of rule set or some kind of action um, you would do it through you could do it through the rule system now we can just bypass all of that and just implement our own logic directly so if we take this application here like I said super simple got a couple of controls here it's a gallery connected to a SharePoint list and um, got a refresh button here I can also view the our, my existing records by clicking on them. I can also delete them if I want to, but I've got a little plus button here that create, that opens up a screen that will allow me to create a new record. Now, um, at the moment, because there's no validation on this form or I'm not doing any validation, I can just click on the submit button. And what then happens is I end up with a blank record which is not ideal and guaranteed if you if I were to roll this application out um, into production or to a user base I would end up with a whole ton of blank data because users will find a way to click on submit without putting any data into the form so we have to find a way to stop that from happening so let me just kill that and go into my new record screen now, what I've found is the easiest way to do this is just to restrict um, restrict access to this button until my form has, has valid data in it. Now, just to keep things simple, let's just, um, the way I like doing this is I, I just disable this button until I am, um, until the form is ready to be submitted. And I find that is really the simplest way. This is the, um, this is the way users submit new records. So by disabling this button until the form is ready, they can't submit a inv uh, like invalid data to your data set. So if I click on this and I select the display mode, we've got a few options here. So display mode edit. If I just change this to disabled, we can see this button now goes disabled if I run it can't click on it. Let's just change that back to edit. Now what I want to do is I want to put some logic in here to look for a certain field. Well let's say we don't want to submit any records if the title field is blank. So in our if statement, let's close the bracket here. So let's put our expression in and I just want to look, I'm going to use the is blank function and the field is called I'm pretty sure it's called request title TXT request title and I want to look at the text property so if if request title is blank I want to disable that disabled. Otherwise, I want to set it to edit. So effectively what I'm doing here is I am returning either display mode disabled or display mode edit back to this property of display mode if this field is blank. So now you can see I can't click on request anymore without a title. So let's just type, this is a new request. But you can see as soon as I started typing something, my request button is now enabled and I'm able to click that. Because it still, still have a value in here, as soon as, I, as soon as it goes blank, now we can't submit a record anymore. 
So that's about the simplest way we can validate this form. So obviously I can do more fields than just the one. So the way to do that, say um, we've also got this field here called text cost. So I want to look at more than just one field now. So I want to look at if that is blank or if text cost and I also want to let's wrap this in a is blank so now I'm looking at both fields so if either one when I use the or operator I'm saying effectively if that one is blank or that one is blank disable this button so now if I type this is a request we still cannot submit our request until I add a cost in so now we're validating two fields so we can keep adding to that. So let's also validate reason. We add another, whoop, another or operator. We need another is blank. And this is TX, whoop needs to be within the function txt reason the text value of that field again if we run that we still grayed out as soon as I start typing we're now enabled if I go back and remove my title for some reason I can no longer submit so all of those fields have to be completed to get a submit request. So that's a really simple way of implementing form field validation just by putting the logic on the button. So, but what you'll find will happen when your application grows or your form uh, fields grow and your validation um, is across many more fields. When a user goes to input the data, they will uh, potentially have, um, will get, will not be able to necessarily be able to find what field they have to fill out to um, enable our submit request. Now, um, especially if you have uh, quite a bit of uh, complex validation, it may be difficult for the user to determine what they have not put in correctly. So they won't end up being, they won't be able to submit their request and they'll just have this grayed out submit button and they won't really know why they um, can't submit the request. And usually users will just think that there's a bug or there's an error with the system when in fact, there's a validation error on the form. So a good way to do that and what typically what uh, forms will do is they will put like a, like a red box or the border will go red showing the user what field is uh, still in error. So we can do that exact same thing in um, Power Apps and uh, let me just show you quickly how to do that. So in here I'll choose the uh, request title and I'll select the border color property and you can see we've just got a standard border color set for whatever condition but we want to add some logic in here. So if under our condition if this if txt request title let's put that in an is blank like we did with our submit button if it's blank we want to make that red we'll just use the red constant value there we could also use an RGBA value or set it to some other color, but I want to use red as 
Red is a standout and pretty much a default color that's used when there is an error on the form. So if I go back to my submit form, see I'm grayed out. But if I get rid of my request title value, I can now see that my border has gone red. If I start typing, I fixed that error, but I still have the error because this field is blank. So we want to implement that same logic over here. So let me just copy that. So for border color on here, paste that, but instead of the request title field, I want to do the text reason field. Let's do the same for the cost value. Border color. Okay, let's run that. So I can see now I can't submit my request because if I go up and scroll through my form, I can see my reason for request is red. So let me type that and now it's gone green and my submit button is good to go. If I remove request title and cost, both of those fields are now red and I can go back and I can clearly identify that there's an error. So let me put some values in, test, and now I'm ready to go and I can submit that request. And I've got a request here without dummy data in, so that's great. Now, the other thing we could do, let me just open that back up, is um, in circumstances where we've got a really long form and um, users have to sort of scroll up and down and maybe even go across several screens, just having to search through multiple screens can be painful, um, especially if we've just got a grayed out button right at the end of the, the screen and we can't, we don't really know why that has, um, why that has been grayed out. Uh, again, we'll have the same problem because users can't visually see that that has been, um, that that has, there's an error somewhere on the, uh, on the form. So they can't see that unless they go through every single screen or they actually uh, look, scroll up and down the screen. So what we, what we also can do here, we can just add a label. And I found this works really well just add this next to and let's make that color red and let's make it a bit bigger and perhaps even bold it I don't want it Okay, so in here, I'm just going to make the message say there are validation errors. Please fix. So this is now telling the user that there's some validation errors on the form. We could even maybe put there so we can see that clearly and fix that formatting up a little bit. Okay, so we can see there's some validation errors on the form please fix, but we don't want to show this all the time. We only want to show this when this particular button is disabled because that means there is a validation error. So we can do that by going down to the display, to the visibility is we want to hide or show this. So again, we do this with logic. So if, and we select the submit button and it's display mode is equal to disabled 
So if that button has been disabled, then we want to return back true to the visibility, the visible property. Otherwise, we don't want to show it. Okay, so let's put a title in. Still have validation errors. Let's put a cost in and a reason. <laughs> and now I have no more validation errors on that form. So this is a really simple way of you implementing form field validation in your Power App application. Give my video a thumbs up if you appreciated it. And I guess even give it a thumbs down because apparently that also helps the channel. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.